Alright, today we have a video that is kind of overdue. We have a video on all five beta lobbies. Starting with Lobby A, which can be accessed to the left door specifically. We go in, and this castle is exclusive to the show. Connected to a variety of worlds, so open the door to head and get adventure. It's good to make a save stay in the middle here. Now, if we look around, it's just kind of a normal lobby. Doors three, one, two, four. That's an important thing to note, what the doors say. And, well, first off, let's go in here. This leads to Snow Slide B roll. Yeah, we'll worry about the text when we get there. It's pretty normal. Not much to note. Oop. Gameplay. Well, if we go in this door, we're taken to Mountain B-Roll. Again, not like terribly much to note. I love gameplay. <laughs> this door will take us to Fire Bubble B-Roll. I'd say, well, I already talked about it in the intro. But I'd take note of Beyond the Volcano there. And finally, this door, we have Waterland Shoshin Shoshinkai. Shoshinkai. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. And something you should take note of here is this platform. I'm not sure how that's pronounced, Shoshinkai. I'm just going to say Shoshinkai. If I find out later that I've been butchering it this entire time, I will scream. But yeah. Um, yeah. Of course, we also have these doors. Well, we should probably cover that door last, now that I think about it. First, let's head down here. And this takes us to... Uncanny Courtyard. We'll cover this eventually. There's a lot to talk about with that, but... We need a certain amount of stars before we do that. And, if you look up here, you're taken to... The Star. Pretty neat. Now... Going through this door, this depends on where you are in the game. If you are just starting the game, then heading forward and going through this trap door will take you to. Uh, I believe it's called Bowser in the Dark World Shoshinkai. And um, the thing is, if you come here at any point after you've already been in, like just when you have any red stars, instead, this is going to take you to. Lobby B. You may be wondering why I'm calling this Lobby B. We'll talk about that soon. First, going out takes us to Castle Grounds, obviously. But, first, let's talk about Lobby E. And take a note of our of the HUD here, how it says 02 lives, uh, zero, 00 coins, going in here. Suddenly, it's two lives and zero coins. Sorry, it's still double digits, but that's because we have double digits. Something to note. Now, what's so different about here? Well, the doors still take you to Castle Ground, and this is still going to take us to Uncanny Courtyard. However, if we go back in, it takes us back to Lobby A. Note how our HUD has changed back to 0, 2, and 0, 0. This is not Lobby E. So, loading our save states. Um, oh yeah, also looking up, looking up also takes you to the star, like, the same star the other place takes you to. It's the same, do both. But, what's really different is these. 
This is Snow Slide Shushikai. Not it's very interesting. Like, there's not much to notice immediately, but we'll kind of like, we'll talk about it when we get there, okay? So check out the video in the description whenever it exists, and we'll talk about it. It's about the same case for here. This is not in Shushinsukai, but it's not much Actually, no, there is something immediately noticeable. This little stretch of land was not on the other side. So yeah, that is something worth noting. Now, the other two have stuff no also have stuff noble immediately. In here. I said take note of beyond the volcano. It's different. There's new platforms there. There's star. Again, I talked about this specifically in the intro, so it's not like a big revelation. And here we have Waterland. Just Waterland. And this platform now has a star. Neat. I should not have jumped because I almost grabbed it, and I don't want to do that until I make the video on this place. Yeah. Um, something to note is that if you're playing before the unabandoned version, then Lobby A takes you to Waterland, and then Lobby E takes you to Waterland to Shinsukai. The two orbs are switched around in the unabandoned version, which is interesting. And then, one final shared warp between the two. This. Lobby B again. Now, ba basically, what was going on there is Lobby A and E are designed to look as similar as possible, but yet slightly different. It's just designed solely to fuck with you. Cause like, Lobby A and E look identically... They look identical, they function identically. The only difference is the HUD changing. That's the only actual difference. The only way you can actually tell them apart. And the levels themselves are just like... If you're playing unabandoned, they all have unique stars, so... That's another thing, like you'll go in one, collect the, st you collect the stars, and you're like, oh, cool, I did it. And then maybe at some other point in Lobby E, maybe you're not sure what lobby you're in, so you just kind of like go in the same door. And you're like, oh, it's here again. Wait a minute, didn't I get that star? What? That kind of thing. It's just very meticulously designed to mess with you. Anyway, this is Lobby B we're in. Uh, probably make a new save state. Actually, no. Well, I, I shouldn't have made a save state there. We'll talk about it in a minute. First thing we show off, door takes you to castle grounds, which, you know, they all take you to castle grounds, and, you know, the, the doors only go to lobbies A and E, and of course that's, like, the, um, other area. The lobby dodge E64, but, like, that's just kind of besides the point. Now, why should I not have made that safe state there? I should have made it here. This painting could actually take you to two places. Normally, it takes you to... Frosty Highlands. The key word is normally. Sometimes it takes you to if we can get it. Don't make me cut, please. I'm gonna have to cut, aren't I? Uh... Oh, there we go. This is Snow Tunnels. They're reliably accessed from somewhere else entirely. But, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll have something to say about them when I get here, actually, because these gave me a huge mindfuck because of my stupidity. But, um... Yeah. Now, going here, this, this painting has something similar. 
Normally, it takes you to... Not here! This is actually the rare event. Taking you to WF.Z64, which I already talked about. Should have a video in the description. Timer. Uh-oh, what could that mean? You should watch the video. But normally, it takes you to... Womp's Kingdom. <laughs> Womp, Womp's Kingdom. I think this... Actually, is this... I think this is one thing of... Uh, yeah. I think this might be my favorite iteration of Womp's Fortress in the game. Alright. Make another save say here. Because we're kind of moving around now. The other two paintings don't have that random chance. Oh yeah. And this painting might catch you off guard if you're not expecting it. This is Blazing Bully Base. And it might be my favorite iteration of, you know, Lethal Lava Land here. Also, the, also these guys. These guys. What's up? Oh, you don't care? You don't care about me? Do you care about each other? Now kiss! Aw, oh, they, they, they didn't want to kiss. Tragic. Alright. This way, our last painting taking us to... Jolly Roger Lagoon. This is a very useful place. A very easily accessible and useful place if you know what you're doing. So, keep this in mind. It can get you something very useful. Now, these doors, going upstairs, takes you to Plexel Upstairs. You might recognize this, because sometimes you get sent there from getting a star in a world that's not a painting. Well, heading down here takes us to Plexel Lobby. Yeah, probably the quickest way to get back to somewhere recognizable. And now, going in the middle and looking up, this takes us to Lobby C. Something I should know before I read those out. Looking up uh, here takes you back to Lobby B. It's two-way. And, get a note, the doors here are just one, two, three, four in Lobby B. Pretty simple. Well, in Lobby C, The doors are 3313. Three, this is worth noting. Like the door the doors for the first three lobbies are very good to know because of this. This the fast travel warp takes you to a random lobby. Here, one, two, three, four, so we're in lobby B. Three one three three. Oh, three one two four. So 3124, like Lobby A, and at the top are HUD's uh, single digits, so that means we're in Lobby E. It has a chance to take you to Lobby A as well. Now we're in 3313, so Lobby C. That's how you tell them apart. Now, let's actually talk about Lobby C. Heading out. Obviously, take the castle grounds, nothing worth noting. And we're gonna do this a little differently. We're gonna cover this side first. This takes you to Jolly Roger Bay Beta. Might be my favorite iteration of, you know, Jolly Roger Bay here. There's a lot there's a lot of good warps here, really. Well this one takes you to Blarg's Lava Realm. Might not be my favorite, but has a really you know, cool vibe. Yeah. 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 Alright. Now, let's cover the doors real quick. Going up. If you fall down here, it takes you to Bowers in the Dark World Shoshinkai. Now, um, you do not really want to be here if you already beaten him, which, you know, I imagine you have. 
I'd say the only time this is useful is like, say, um, I, it's the same one lobbies A and E take you to at the beginning of the game. I'd say the only time it could be useful is if like, you know, it's possible, it's possible to get one other red star from the beginning of the game, but you have to do it in a pretty, pretty roundabout way. And there, there's also a way to get, like, get to Plexal Lobby, and, uh, the, not, yeah, the Plexal Lobby. If you die in a specific area, you can also get to the Plexal Lobby before, you know, you're supposed to. There's ways to kind of get to the rest of the game before, you know, you naturally beat the Bowser thing. And I say that's the only time this warp would be useful, because I think the warp in Lobby to A and E gets disabled and takes you to Lobby B automatically when you get a red star. So, like, say you did it another way and you're like, wait, man, I can still use that red star for Bowser. Well, that's how you do it. Going past that is the fourth floor. Neat! Two-way, of course. And there is actually something that would be good to know. Um, it's a chance thing, and I think it's more common at night. I'll try to show it at the end of the video, actually. But, um, there's a chance for Peach's ghost to appear there. And... Going down takes us to Crimson Hallway. This hallway sure is crimson. There's another interesting thing with night mode. But yeah. Now, why did I skip these two doors? Well, going in this door. Oh. Alright. Neat. Good to know. Wall. Going in this door. Welcome to Lobby D. Y the... The fast travel warp will never take you to Lobby D. You have to be sent to Lobby... C? And walk here yourself. Looking up takes you to Lobby B again. Same thing as Lobby C. And, of course, I should probably skip my save state. Boop. Leaving here takes you to Castle Grounds. Going back to lobbies A and E. Go going up here takes us to Plexal Basement again. Uh, I mean, Plexal Lobby again. Just in a different area of it. Really love this text. This glitching factor is really not putting. Wall going down takes you to really interesting texture. As I accidentally said, flexible basement. Pretty straightforward. Wow. And, of course, let's cover these doors. First off, we have this door, which... Same as the Womp's Fortress thing in the other room. Blank. Nothing. I like the arrow in there that kind of points to nothing. Here, we have... bomb Bomb River. This leads to a kind of expansive set of levels, actually. I'd say this, this is just something very interesting to just kind of explore on your own, I'd really say. But I mean, obviously I'll make a video on it anyway. What the hell are you doing here? You're not, you're not supposed to be here. Dead. Anyway, this way takes you to... Snowman's Land Beta. Pretty neat. Honestly, it, it kind of makes me think of a Mario 64 DS level. It makes me feel like it would be. It's not. 
but like, it honestly feels like something that would have been made for Mario 64 DS. I think the Silver Stars probably don't help with that. And... I think that might be effectively it. Um, I can't really think of anything else made for the show, except, you know, stuff I'll have to cut away real quick for. So, uh, let me do that, I guess. <laughs> Okay, I'm here on another file. I hit the yellow cap switch till I got fucking um permanite mode. Gonna probably end up you have to do it. Alright. So which are we in? I think this is Bobby B. Actually good, because I do have something to show off here. Um Oh, uh, that's what I didn't know that to do. Is this it? I believe there's something interesting to do with this. I don't know. Maybe it is another area. Well, heading there anyway. So now in lobby C, let's check this. Is Peach here? Yep. Peach is ghost. And if we approach it, jump. It just fades away. This is interesting. Oh, it happens here too. Huh. Music slowing kind of makes me off put. It speeds up. Oh, hello, Peach. Still there. Huh. Now you're gone. Hold on. I'm kind of experimenting here. Yeah, move, fo move forward. Hi. Bye. Damn. Alright. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. There's something interesting. There's like a weird bug type thing, but it doesn't seem to be happening. Not there. I'm gonna look into this a little more, because I swear there's like a nine foot exclusive bug. Give me one minute. Alright, here we are. Back in Lobby B, I figured out what I was doing wrong. Now, heading up into here. Let's go upstairs, I believe. Heading this way. Going into the one door through this chair, and through this door, the music becomes, you know, its normal music box stage. If we go back, it stays music box. This is unique to that specific door, because, like, if we go in this door, sure, it's music box, but then we go back through, and it's the normal sound bot again. Very interesting to know. Luigi? What? What? The fuck? That's a thing that can happen? Uh... Okay. I did not know that was a thing that could happen. Anyway, did it just trigger that? It's Mario again. Okay. Mario again. Alright, alright. Anyway, as I was trying to show off before I got distracted, going back down into Lobby B, because we did that, and it speeds up, we're in Lobby B with the same music. I believe if we go somewhere else, like looking up, it changes. I mean, it stays. Go in here. It stays. Neat. But if we were to go outside, go back in. Okay, just warp. It does not stay. Back to this. I am gonna head back out, actually. Just gonna stay out here, so it stays silent as I now show off the origins. Actually, I could mention something while this is open. I believe 
the castle grounds included, like, both the castle grounds and the lobbies themselves, they're based off the Shunshinkai beta, beta of the Mario 64. In fact, I can actually kind of show this off with what I'm about to you know, pull up now. With this. This is real footage. Like, this isn't a fan series or anything. This was made before the trend really caught on. But this is where that weird music scene comes from. Yes, but crowds are amazed by the, well, amazing Super Mario 64. And the type of actions you'd expect it to perform. And the bit that caught everyone's imagination. And Yeah. It's, of course, slightly different in B33, but like, yeah. Very interesting to note. And, of course, you can kind of see the castle design it, you know, as it is in B33. It's hard to tell from this specifically. Although, this is a dead ringer. Again, like, I th this was fucking four years ago, before the trend really caught on. And even if you say, nah, the trend was kind of a thing at that point. Which I don't think it is, unless I'm misremembering. Even if you say that, this was before B33 really started development. And the next thing, this, this is not real beta footage, it's just a silly little fan thing. But this does show off something that B33 borrows. Like, this is just a real castle design, I believe. But, at least skip forward a little. Oh, actually, no, this is also the, there's something. Yeah, actually, you could say this is kind of like inspiration for Lobby C, because the painting warp does not work. In B33, the painting is gone entirely, but here, you know, it just doesn't work. Like, it's there, but it doesn't work. Going through the door, goes into another lobby. Yeah. Which is very, very interesting. That's about the most I have to show from this, I think. Yeah, this is this is completely different on the game. But yeah. I think that's effectively all I really have to show of the lobbies. It's a lot of very interesting information. And, you know, this is I think this is one of the longest videos I've done yet. Almost like 30 minutes. Jesus Christ. Well, I hope you enjoyed. I'm probably not going to watch this back to check for any editing errors. So, like, I mean, not editing errors, but, you know, me errors with my silly, dumb voice that I've had people commenting that they say they enjoy, which I say thank you. Thank you to that. I'm, I'm saying thank you because of that. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm okay, I'm probably done for today, but I'm going to say I'm off to record more videos so I sound productive. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.